Hey guys, so last time we talked about making boxes and we built this simple little rectangular box. And I wanted to talk this time about getting designs on boxes like these here. Um, and I wanted to talk specifically about how to get them centered on the box. Because in a lot of cases like this round one, if this design is off center, it looks really kind of cheap and nasty. Now, on a square box, it's pretty easy to just, you know, draw a rectangular line and get things, you know, fairly centered from the bit. But a lot of times, things like brushes get in the way. And also, say you're insane enough to think that a box shaped like a lightning bolt is a good idea. Getting something centered on this is a little bit more problematic. But I'm going to show you an easy, repeatable way to get these things centered really quickly. So if you do a lot of boxes, you can do a nice, quick, repeatable pass on these. I'm also gonna talk a little bit about how to find these designs, what formats they need to be in, and how to bring them into Carbide Create. So let's get on with that. Okay, first let's talk a little bit about finding designs. Um, typically, I use SVGs, although Carbide Create will import both SVG and DXF. These are similar formats in that they're all vector-based, which means you can shrink them and grow them without losing any of the image fidelity. So typically I'll just go to something like Google Images and I'll do a search for tribal SVG. I like the tribal designs and I'll show you why. They've got a lot of these nice little swooshy bits right here and this, this V-carves really, really well. So there's a lot of interesting designs here for boxes. Um, and typically you can find them in the original SVG format. Um, if you find them and they're in a JPEG format, you can take them into a program called Inkscape and trace them. But it's a little more complicated than I want to get into in this video. I will put some links down in the doodly-doo to give you a, a couple of tutorials for that if you want to do it. Um, but basically you find images like this. This would be a good one for a box. All right, And this one is an actual SVG file. I can just right click on this, save image as, and we can see it's saving as a, an image file. Then I'm just going to save it to my downloads. Boink. And now I have that one and I can put it on a box. Now one thing I would say about images is if you plan on making a box for yourself, I think it's fine to download images this way. If you plan on selling boxes, I would buy the image, buy a license to the image. That way the artist is, is getting paid for their work and you're getting paid for the box. Um, one place to do this is Etsy. Etsy has a lot of different uh, SVG image files for sale and they're typically licensed to where you can print them on a t-shirt or on a box or what have you. Uh, as long as you don't sell the design as being your own. So if you're going to put something on a box that you plan on selling, go ahead and buy the image. That way the artist gets paid and you get paid. It's just polite. Um, so let's talk about getting these designs onto the box. So this is the box design that we used last time, right, to create our maple box. And what I want to do is duplicate this because we're going to need parts of it, but not all of it. So I'm just going to save as, and I'm going to call this box top. And the first thing I'm going to do is I don't need both sides. So function delete will get rid of that. And then I'm going to delete this and delete this. All I want is the outside of the box, right? I also want to go through and delete all of these tool paths. I don't need them anymore. And I'm going to go back into here, into our setup section, and I'm going to make this just six by four, just to get it down a little bit. I also want to take the toolpath zero and set it to center, right? And I'm going to set this to three quarters of an inch. And I'll show you why in a little bit. But let's go ahead and do that. Now you notice this is centered, right? So I want this, this is our outer edge for our original box. And I want to keep this. 
And next, I'm just going to reset our view to get it centered in the screen here. Now, what I want, I need this so that I know where my box edges are, and that way I can line my design up in it. And then I'm going to come down here, I'm going to unselect, and I'm going to use the import feature here. And we're going to import an external file that I've already got prepared for this. My downloads. Do, do, do. Tribal lizard. Okay, now you notice our lizard is a little bit huge. If I reset the view, I've got this whole thing. Now, a couple things here. You're going to want to group the elements, otherwise, it will see each of these things as discrete pieces. And when you shrink and grow, it gets to be a bit of a pain. So tell it group elements, done. And then I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to scale him down to about four inches wide. Let's try that first and see if I get close. Quick. And drag him over into here. All right. And I reset my view again. Okay. That looks fairly close. I may bring him up just a hair. Uh, bring him up 1.1. Yeah, yeah, that's got a little bit better coverage. Now that okay. we've got our design imported, and we've got it roughly kind of where we want it to be on the box, we want to make sure everything here is centered, right? So I'm going to select this, go to my alignment tools, and I'm going to choose align to stock. Okay, now what that does is that makes sure that everything is centered on this point right here, and that's going to be critical for when we try and align things for our box. So, now that everything's centered, this guy looks good on the lid, and our lid here is centered in the design, we're going to do a pair of tool paths. The first one we're going to do is going to be for the template for our box top. This will be what holds our box top in place. This one's going to be a contour. We're going to use the stock bottom. I've got a quarter inch bit that I'm going to use. And I'm going to go to the inside, right? So I want it to go around the inside. And I'm going to call this template. Okay. And I'm going to save the G code for just this part. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and disable this because I don't want to use it for the other operation that we're going to do. The other operation that we're going to do is a V-carve. And for that, I just want our lizard selected. All right, so here's our, our nice little lizard. We're going to V-carve him. And for that, I'm going to edit. Uh, actually, I'm going to choose my... Um, my 60 degree V bit to get a little bit more definition. All right. And that'll do a V carve. You see how those show up here. We get kind of an idea of how it's going to trace that. And I'm just going to call this V carve. And not with this deselected, I'm just going to export this. We're going to save the G code for that. We're going to call it box top V. Okay, now that that's done, we're going to save everything and we're going to go over and take a look at Carbide Motion. So, one of the nice features we have in Carbide Motion is something called Rapid Position. If you go to Jog and then Rapid Position, you'll notice you've got a bunch of dots here on the screen. The center one is the one we want. If I press this, you'll notice that my machine moves to the center of my wasteboard. There's a black dot here that kind of lets me know where that center is. And what I did there is I just turned the machine on I uh, with the V-bit in and dropped it down until it made a small depression in my wasteboard. And then I marked it with a Sharpie just so I'd have something as a reference. Now this is what we're going to use to center our box. 
So basically there's a couple of things we need. The first one is we're gonna use a piece of three quarter MDF. This is about eight by eight. And we wanna position this so that it's about in the center of our wasteboard. Now, if you're like me and you've already got a bunch of holes drilled in there, you may not wanna drill more holes to attach this. So what I tend to do is I use these little things. They're called a dowel center. And you can put these down in the holes where you've created your design and basically use them to line up where you want to drill your holes. And so what we want to be able to do is drill through this and clamp it down in the center so that we can get a repeatable cut with this. And I'll show you what I mean. So I use the marks from my dowel center to drill a couple of quarter inch holes in this and now I'm going to attach it to my wasteboard. It's usually a good idea if you're gonna do a lot of box tops and stuff to keep a few of these hanging around just for ease of use. So I usually keep about four or five of them at any one time. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and bolt it down here. Okay, so now that we've got that bolted down in place, I'm gonna go ahead and just for the sake of reuse, I always like to go ahead and mark my front so the next time I use it it's a little bit easier to figure out where things are going. So now that we've got this set we're going to cut our template for our box and the easiest way to do that now is we're going to go ahead and use that rapid position again and that goes right to our center. Now all we have to do is set our z-axis and we'll be ready to cut. So if you'll remember, the template file is the outline of this box. What that's gonna give us is a pocket down here that we can go ahead and just slide that box top in and that will be assured to center every single time. So let's go ahead and cut that guy out. So now, if we've done our job right, our lid fit right down in there. Perfect. So that's not going anywhere. And the next time we position center, we'll be right in the middle of our lid. So now with our V-bit in place, we're going to do our rapid position again in the center. If I can get this little button to work. Okay, and now we're centered. We know our X and Y are good. All we have to do is set Z again. Okay, that looks like that's got it. Okay, let's take a look and see what we got here. And we can see our design is lined up really well on the box top. And now we just need to do a little bit of sanding and cleanup on it. Okay, so here's our lizard box. Top looks pretty good. Um, I'll probably do a little bit more finish sanding on it and sand up the edges and make everything nice. And then I'll go ahead and put a finish on it. Um, as far as finishes go with things like this, I tend to use what's called Danish oil. It's this stuff, you can get it at Home Depot. I just like the natural finish. What that does is gives you like this, a nice contrast between those cut pieces and the flat maple. And it's a very easy finish to put on. You just brush it on, um, leave it excess, and let it dry for about 30 minutes. It'll go ahead and soak up a lot of that finish. Uh, come back with a dry cloth, wipe it down, get the excess off. Uh, and then put a second coat on it. And again, it's a, it's a very easy finish to apply. It's almost idiot proof and gives you a very nice result. So give that a shot and see what you can come up with. So the principle for this should be the same for any box, no matter what kind of box it is. If the template piece is centered, your design on your box will end up being centered. The one caveat I have with this is for the round boxes, they tend to want to spin in the center when that bit hits them. So I do use some extra clamping 
that I can push down and, and get these things tightened up and that'll hold the box in place. And these are just, you know, the typical, the T bar for screwing these things in and the easy lock nuts are what's under here. So again, the principle is the same for whatever kind of box you have and hopefully this will give you some ideas. <laughs>